in a, just in a moment. So yeah, here we see Matt Maynard bringing that Sneasler, that Dondozo, Baxcalibur, Ball Corona, Rillaboom, and King Gambit. Interesting to note here is the King Gambit is holding that safety goggles. Although um, on the other side, uh, well, there is the Among Us. So perfectly uh, well-timed moment to be holding that safety goggles for the King Gambit, especially it's using the Swords Dance set. And we yeah, we were see, actually talking uh, about this uh, a moment uh, ago before the, uh, yeah. like, we got into the match. But yeah, Matt yeah. playing the exactly the Juan Garcia team that we saw doing super well at uh, League Regionals uh, uh, just a few days ago. And the only small change he made is the Dondoso Stera, uh, which is the poison uh, instead of the uh, bug one, which I don't think it's like a countermeasure to his opponent as much of just like uh, his own take on the team with poison being super strong in this format. But sorry, what were you saying about uh, the composition? Yeah, I th I mean, I was just only going to add on to that Terra Poison since it could possibly be an answer to all these Sneezlers running around since it's a natural um, resistant type to both of Sneezlers stab moves. But that's basically it. Um, yeah. Is there anything you, you notice as well though? Uh, about what? I mean, like anything else that like worthy of taking note before we head into the game? Um... Not really, but actually, I think the game we have the game ready, so uh, we yeah. are either moving to the opponent's team or, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rush the Zai's team, yeah. uh, like you were mentioning, we have the Amungus with the Goldengo, Arcaludon, Incineroar, Basculision, and Pelipper. We actually saw this team before earlier in the stream. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I believe it was used in the, the Japan versus Korea match. Uh, which was the first match of the night and yeah i think it's just gonna be an interesting thing of um well we did see earlier that there was a dondozo there was a rillaboom so that's the, i think that's the slight um obstacle on the way of this rain duo here of trying to get over since yeah. dondozo and rillaboom definitely give problems to the basque legion so i think it's a matter of can you weather the storm in a scenario yeah. for um, Matt, and on the side of Raj, can you overcome the defensive uh, natural typing on the side of Matt? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, we're going right into the match uh, with Rai playing the Arcaludon and the uh, Basculi June uh, up against the Sneasler and King Gambit from Matt. Super strong uh, lead from uh, uh, this regulation. And I was just going to mention that I think once again, the Arcaldun is going to be a really strong win condition for uh, uh, Team Ireland's player because, uh, like you were saying, the Dondos and Rillaboom could be very problematic and the Arcaldun just deals very well with both of those. Uh, yeah, so let's see what happens the first turn of the game. Yeah, and it's interesting to note that the Arcaldun um, it has the Terry Fairy, so it's going to be a problem for the Sneezler if it does go for that close combat. So there's a little bit of mind games here, since, you know, going into Terra Fairy does open you, leave you wide open for those Dire Claws. But we don't see that here. We just see uh, the switch out to the Pelipper, just probably wanting to give that rain boost onto the wave crashes of the um, Basque Legion. But we see a safe protect going out on the... Uh, King Gamet, but we see a strong Ooh. flip turn instead going to that Sneasler. What a predict. Yeah, actually, Raj, as opposed to Taro earlier, uh, is opting for a Swift Swim um, uh, yeah, Choice Band set instead of the Choice Scarf Adaptability set. Um, yeah, and he goes for this play. Ooh, we see the coaching, Ooh. actually. But yeah, like I was going to say, like we don't see the soccer punch, which would have been really useful for Matt uh, into the Basculation slot. But yeah, he manages, like Raj manages to like save the Arcaldon for the turn and also get the rain up. But that King Gambit is looking scary, honestly. Yeah, I, I, I am also wondering about that protect, if it was the right thing, or maybe they were just too afraid of that body press being thrown out from the Arcaladon, you know, sometimes the players do make those bold plays 
And maybe he yeah. was just trying to avoid that unnecessary damage that could have just th been thrown out to the King Gambit. I mean, I kind of agree with you. Like, that was a very passive play uh, with the King Gambit. But we will see if it plays out. We see uh, Terra on the uh, Arcaludon into the Fairy type. We will see a Darkrow into that slot. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so, <laughs> but um, it is VGC. As we see a Dark Law, oh, but it does go on the Pelipper, so um, somewhat safe for the Arcaladon since it won't be taking um, the full damage from this King Gambit since it only is using Dark moves. As we see the Weather Ball chipping down that King Gambit down low, and I think that's just enough, Arash, for this um, Arcaladon to take out the King Gambit if it did target it with that Electroshock. Oh yeah, absolutely. Once again, we don't see the Sucker Punch from the King Gambit, which yeah. is pretty good news for Raj, since uh, he's not able to get any kill. I mean, uh, yeah, since Matt is not able to get any kill. Um, so yeah, like removing the King Gambit is obviously very good for him. But on the other hand, like right now, he has the Terra Fairy Arcaludon on the field in front of this Nizzler. And so yeah, that's pretty threatened. But yeah, actually not a bad spot for... Uh, for uh, Raj, I would say. Yeah, it's not so bad for Raj. I mean, it could definitely be better, but right now, the offensive um, advantage is slightly in his favor. But right now, because we do see the Rillaboom coming out, we can easily see a predictable, um, you know, predictable and safe fake out going onto the Pelipper and the Dire Claw onto the Arcaldon, just to check it right here. And, you know, just from there, it is still not. Um, completely in favor of Raj, as we see, we do see the switch out here, probably identifying that no matter what, um, that Arcaladon is vulnerable. So, you know, just Ooh. switching out to something that can take that attack like Among Us. Yeah, and we see the very defensive play from Raj, switching in the Among Us, which is actually Rocky Helmet, so does pretty well against these Pokemon that yeah. are left from Matt, and as we see, he actually picks up the kill on the Smizzler. Ooh. Oh, very interesting that we do see um, the Rillaboom did not go for the fake out. Probably trying to predict that they'd switch out and trying to catch the Basque Legion, I guess, since it did go for that wood hammer. But unfortunately for Matt, uh, Raj did go for the safe protect here. And that switch in with the Among Us, as you said, was a very good call since it did passively take out that Sneasler, which was um, sort of a problem against Raj. So yeah, right but actually, see this is. Uh, sorry. Yeah, go, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go, go ahead. Sorry, I'll I'll say later. No, no. Say that. Uh, but yeah, we do just see the back caliber coming out here, and I think it's just going to be a question of um, will this Pelipper be able to throw anything out? But I don't think so, since it would be safer to just grassy glide it. Yeah, no. What I was going to say is like uh, it's actually two versus four for uh, Matt, but. Uh, what I'm thinking is actually uh, Matt has access to strong priorities and Raj actually used already the Terra and like his Pokemon left are the Arcaludon, the Among Us and the uh, Basku Legion which is threatened by the Rillaboom. So actually, I don't know, this might not be over despite the Pokemon count though I will say it's going to be pretty hard for Matt to take down the Arcaludon. Yeah, for sure, because, I mean, the grassy terrain is set up, so although it's not going to be healing the Arcaludon completely, it is still healing that Among Us, which will support it. And you were correct, there is that priority um, boost, but will you be able to take out all the remaining Pokémon on the side of Raj within the time that you can, considering that Grassy Glide needs to be thrown out in the during the uh, duration that this grassy surge is set up. Yeah, also worth mentioning that uh, Matt still hasn't used Terra. He has Ghost on the Baxcalibur yes. and the Water on the Rillaboom. Um, he's probably going... I mean, it's tricky because the Basculation threatens the Terra Ghost on the Baxcalibur. Uh, but if he doesn't go for it, then it's going to be hit super effectively from the Arcaldon. So actually, I'm thinking this spot is overall good for Raj, but let's see how this turn plays out. Yeah, I'm I, I'm just a bit um, unsure about that Terra Ghost, since you do get rid of your Dragon Typing and you open yourself up for these Electro Shots to 
easily strengthen the Arcaladon, but we do see the Icicle Spear being thrown out onto the Basque Legion, which will take it very easily and naturally because of its typing. And the Woodhammer being thrown out to Arcaladon, being able to survive it, get that stamina boost, and it's just a question of what did the Arcaladon go for. Uh, but we do see, yeah, it does go for the Dragon Pulse, um, which was a decent uh, attack, considering, you know, it's the safest thing, it's gonna deal decent damage no matter what. Yeah, I mean, there's also going to be, like, Grassy Terrain is going to be up for at least a couple more turns, I think. Um, but yeah, the Arcaladon uh, boosted itself in <clears throat> defense, so... Yeah, it's pretty hard, I mean, to take down both the Pokémon, like, for Matt to take down both the Pokémon in front of him. But I would say the Basco Legion is in range for a Grassy Glide at this point. So, it might be doable for him. Also because the Arcaladon doesn't have the very powerful uh, Draco Meteor or Body Press. Uh, for the back Excalibur, so um, yeah, actually, I think this is open, isn't it? Yeah, it's it, it's up in the air, and I think it was very problematic because that um, Arcaladon already got the plus one from the stamina. So then, if Matt would have thrown out a Grassy Glide onto it, it wouldn't be dealing too much. But we don't see that. Instead, we see the Scale Shot being thrown out by the Rock Excalibur onto the Among Us, and it's just a matter of. Um, will Matt be able to change the uh, setup on the side of Raj right now with that Among Us being able to throw out, um, you know, Among Us always does carry with it some sort of pressure onto the board because it can, it's it's a really good supporting Pokemon in general. Ooh. And the Arcaladon actually leaves the second Wood Armor and goes for the Electroshock. Yeah. That's interesting with the rain not being up. I mean, I was really... I know. Go hmm. Yeah, no, 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 I was just agreeing with you. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, this, like, I think it was a really good, bad spot for, like, Matt, because he probably need, like, I think he needed to get damage out really quickly, uh, such as with the ice move into the Among Us, uh, which he didn't, but at the same time, your Kaladin did not go for, like, another, like, you know, a damaging move, and he's going to go down to Grassy Guy now, I think. Oh, actually, it's not, yeah, but... doesn't mean that it goes for the Woodhammer since it's faster, but yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think Raj is basically just trying to stall out these uh, terrain turns just so that he could have a safe um, win condition with his uh, Basque Legion, which is in the back. You know, just trying to not get hit by those priority grassy glides. So I think that's what Raj is trying to go for here. And yeah, I, he's probably just trying to stall out these turns. I believe this is the last turn. Yes, it is the last turn yeah. of the grassy terrain. So yeah, it makes I sense. Think that, that was to, what he was yeah. going for. Yeah, really masterfully waiting out for the grassy terrain to fade, and while at the same time, like letting his opponent pick up a, another KO, uh, so that the uh, last respect's uh, base power is going to be even higher. And yeah, now he can just like uh, go for Rage Powder and Last Respects, I think, pretty safely. Except uh, the Arcaladon is, is probably faster than the uh, than the Basque Legion. So actually, I think it comes down to whether the Among Us leaves or not this Icicle Spear. What do you think? Yeah, the, uh, spot on. It's still not. It's still up in the air for this match because that Among Us is being able to prevent that Basque Legion from falling Ooh. this turn. But then we see a failed protect onto the Among Us, so... Uh, but it, the, the Icicle Spear still does go onto it, getting rid of it. So it's just a matter of, um, will the Basque Legion potentially be able to take out, which is presumptively that really boom. But the Last Respect is going to go up now, because there is one more KO uh, being added to the damage of the Last Respect. So does it take the knockout here? Yes, it does! Okay. Alright. So, yeah, I think that's that's basically it now, since it's always gonna be moving uh, before that Max Caliber. Yeah, and I don't I really. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh no! That's so crazy. The Max Caliber was faster because of the scale shot. Yeah, but like, uh, yeah, I thought it was gonna go for the scale shot and just get the KO, <laughs> but the Max region avoids it. And I think this is so big because without the avoid, I'm quite sure like he wouldn't be able to pick up that KO. So yeah, really crazy game one once again. Yeah, well, well I mean, 
I, I think this is what I like about BGC, you know. I mean, some people do hate the RNG factors of the game, but it does help in creating these scenarios which you don't expect. Like, that, uh, unfortunately, that scale shot does uh, come with a downside, but at the same time, you know, these moves with strong effects do come with their uh, consequences. And unfortunately, being punished there with that miss as the Basque Legion was able to take out uh, the box caliber for the win. Yeah, I agree. Especially also these days with the global challenge, I feel like I'm hearing a lot of people complain about scale shots since now it's uh, <laughs> yeah, big, such a big part of the meta game. But yeah, we, we get a glimpse of that in this game. Uh, scale shot missing is such a big deal because it's such a powerful move. So you lose so much value if, if it doesn't land. Uh, but yeah, I would say uh, Matt actually set up that endgame pretty convincingly. I mean, um, like, it wouldn't have worked if the Amungus got the double protect, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, so, yeah, I, I can yeah. it. Yeah, I'm interested to see what is going to be the adjustment going into game uh, 2. Do you think they, they brought the right Pokemons for uh, this matchup? Yeah, I personally think they did bring the right Pokemon and you did call it earlier that the Rillaboom was a big problem since it could throw out those grassy glides very easily. I think for Matt, the execution is just a matter of trying to get rid of that Among Us sooner so that the Rillaboom could freely, you know, attack everywhere. The problem was that that Among Us could come in at any time with that Rocky Helmet and it was the reason why that Sneezer went down. And on the side of... Um, Raj, it's just a matter of, you know, trying to time that Basque Legion, where its attacks go, and how fast it can go with the rain. So, we're just gonna, you know, that's what we want to see from these players. Just trying to see which would prevail, the offense or the defense from either side. As you know, yeah. we're ready to head on to the game. Yeah, game two, once again, the Basque Legion and the Bastel and the Arcaludon from uh, Raj against the Sneasler and the... Uh, Bax Calibur for Matt. Uh, I was actually going to say, uh, like last game worked out especially poorly for Matt since he was able to get like zero value out of the King Gambit, uh, which makes it even more impressive that he was going to take it at the end. So, yeah, he decides to make this adjustment with the Bax Calibur, trying to uh, m potentially do a little bit more, especially in the early turns of the game. Uh, but yeah, let's see if he is able to do it. Yeah, and it is worth noting that, um, that you did mention that the King Gamut was a bit passive earlier. So I think this Bax Calibur is trying to make up for that. And it is worth noting that an early um, snowball with that scale shot could potentially set this Bax Calibur up to move before um, the Basque Legion, should it reach to that point, right? So um, we'll just have to wait and see here as we see the early terrestrialization probably going on to that Basque Legion. Um, I think we're going to see... A Terra Water Wave Crash just being thrown out. I feel like it's just going to be thrown out onto that Max Caliber because it wouldn't make sense to use the Terrasization just to throw it onto the Sneasel. Ooh, but the Max Caliber leaves that. Yeah, Max Caliber is so bulky, is able to leave the Choice Band uh, Wave Crash in rain and gets. Like, Sneasel gets down the coaching, and what is the Max Caliber going to do when we see the skill shot? Yes, we do. So definitely that Basque Legion is going to be going down because it is holding that loaded dice. So a minimum of four hits should do the trick right here. And yeah, it, get, it does get rid of it. And I think right now, the problem is that because this Baxcalibur already received that coaching buff, it's gonna it's poised to potentially take out the Pelipper, assuming the scale shot does land on it and rendering that Focus Sash useless for this match. Yeah, also because uh, Raj no longer has access to priority moves with the exception of takeout. So there, is, there isn't too much he can do against the Bax Calibur. I mean, Intimidate is going to do some work, uh, but he did not. Like, if he brought the same mods from the last game, then he's not going to have the Incineroar. Uh, and now he's in the awkward spot with the Arcaludon, which. Um, yeah, I mean, it might come down to whether he can get uh, right. Like correctly, the attack from the Sneasler this turn. Uh, but uh, Matt definitely getting higher value out of uh, the early game in this in this second uh, game. Uh, yeah, let's see what happens this turn. 
he's thinking about these moves carefully. Yeah, so one thing on the side that's in favor of Matt is that he is playing more proactively, unlike earlier where, you know, that King Gamut didn't do much when it was the lead for him. So this Baxcalibur is doing really good work here, just being the advance uh, or the vanguard for his team right now. As we see a switch out uh, for the Rillaboom here, probably trying to take advantage of a potential passive protect from the Pelipper, trying to catch that, I guess. But we instead see the switch out. Uh, from the Pelipper, probably trying to preserve that Sash as we oh, see the Incineroar come the out. Incineroar. Yeah, so uh, the Incineroar does bring down the Baxcalibur back to neutral damage. And we see a passive protect on the Baxcalibur. Yeah, the Baxcalibur which is actually threatened by the fake out on the next turn. So uh, this like Pokemon and turn work out perfectly for Raj, which however is, in, is not in the greatest spot. Well, actually, yeah, that that uh, Arcaludon actually is like in a great spot right now against these two Pokemon, since it, like the Rillaboom can do great damage to it, and the Baxcalibur is going to send it at plus four defense if it attacks. So, uh, yeah, I'm actually kind of liking this position for Raj, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, the, exactly. You did mention it. You you called it. Sorry to. Um, just just cut it off, but yeah, you did call it there, and I think it's only the Rillaboom's high horsepower that can do the damage, as you did mention. Yeah, I mean, like, we see how big of a difference that Incineroar does. I mean, I still want to see how this plays out, and will this be enough, actually? I don't think so, but I think it might be really close. Does yeah. It it's no, a matter of his fifth hit. <gasps> oh! Yeah. It lives it because the fifth hit did not go through. So I think, um, yeah, this Electro Shot most likely going into that Max Calibre and being able to take it out. And if it does indeed go to that spot, this Rillaboom will be, you know, rendered a bit neutered for that point because although you do have access to high horsepower to hit that Arcaludon, I don't think it's enough to take it out. You'd need to hit it with. Um, Probably the Sneasler in tandem with it, which is also questionable considering that um, it is there is some sort of mind games of where you could just switch out and in since Raj did already expand that terrestrialization earlier onto the Basque Legion. Yeah, and this is actually really tricky because now Matt has access to the Terrastellar Close Combat onto the Arcaludon, or alternatively the Dark Claw. And yeah, I mean, Raj really needs to keep this Arcaldon alive. It's obviously his win condition. And it's at this point, I believe it's a plus two special attack. Uh, but yeah, it's so threatened right now. And the, uh, like we saw earlier that the Rainaboom also outspeeds it. So yeah, tries to intimidate once again. But I think it's going to come down to which moves uh, has uh, are going to come out from Matt's side. Yeah, I think the um, on the side of Matt, you'd probably want to try and throw your close combat and a high horsepower onto that Arcaladon since it is really the thorn on her side, which most likely is the case here since we see the Terrastalization being dedicated onto that um, Sneezer. Uh, so getting that stellar boost with the close combat, how much is it going to do? Oh my goodness, if, if the high horsepower lands here, that Arcaladon is just definitely going to go down. Way too much, way too much damage, and he actually got way too much. the turn right. Yeah. I mean, the, the Arcaldon lives, but like, I think Matt got way too much damage down, and like, I don't think Raj is going to be able to come back from this. I mean, uh, like, if he tarred, uh like the close combat would have actually like done very little damage and boosted the defense. So, um, I think that would have worked better for him. Um, and I don't believe Raj actually used the Terra so far, did he? No, I, I he used it earlier onto the Basque Legion when he threw out that wave crash onto the Baxcalibur. Oh, the, oh yeah, right, he, he did, he did. Yeah, oh, he so did. then, uh, I mean, this was completely safe. And yeah, Matt actually yeah. Uh, probably running away with this game. Uh, yeah, I mean, like uh, we were, I mean, let's see how this plays out. But like we were saying, he just like, mm, 
change this plan in order to do more in the first sense of the game and now he's just managing and showing how this his plan from game one uh, was really strong with just some slight yeah. adaptation. I think the Rillaboom being faster than the Archaludon is like so big here. It definitely is because it does open that um, option for just going for the 1-2 combo onto it, especially when it's in range for uh, being knocked out. And as he did mention earlier, uh, very well played for the side of Matt to adjust accordingly where he fell short in the earlier game since you know he started out a bit too slow and passive and that allowed Raj to be able to um, grab the initial momentum uh, to grab the game in his favor. And at the point when Matt was trying to fight back already, he was just playing a bit from behind in terms of the resources. So uh, well played for Matt in being able to adjust accordingly there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think so far, he's looked like he had the advantage both games, even if he lost game one, like yeah. in terms of plan at least. Um, I wonder if there is something that uh, Raj can do to uh, swing the game back to his favor. I mean, uh, so far, because like so far, like both games, Matt has brought this Nizzler with uh, with like another physical attacker that got uh, that he used coaching on, uh, with Rilla Boom and uh, something else on the back. So like, I mean, he did bring the Nizzler, the Baxcalibur, Rilla Boom, and King Gambit both games, and he just changed the order. And that seemed to work pretty well. What do you think could Raj maybe do to try to uh, specifically beat those four? Well, I think based on game two, if, um, you know, just some final notes before we head into it, yeah. I think it's a matter of are you willing to gamble with leading that Incineroar knowing that there is a King Gambit on the other side? Because, you know, usually that King Gambit is a deterrent for Incineroar leads. But from there, usually King Gambit players play based on that fear. So it's a matter yeah. of will Raj play against that fear or you know play it play it safe. So yeah, I think that's my call on what should be done. Yeah, I also play think against the fear. Yeah. I also think the Incineroar and the Arcaudan are going to play a big role. But yeah, let's see the game three. Mm. Yeah. Here we go. Um, do we see the change here? No, we just see instead the straight up rain duo of the Basque Legion and the Pelipper and the King Gambit besides the Baxcalibur. So, Matt probably, um, maybe he was trying to catch that Incineroar um, coming out in the lead, considering that he did lead uh, Sneasler earlier. But this time we have King Gambit besides uh, Baxcalibur. So, from this state of the board, Arash, what do you think um, is the state for both players now? Yeah, I mean, they both made huge changes as we expected. Like, we did expect changes from Raj. Uh, but Matt also made a big change going for, like, not bringing this Nizzler in the lead anymore. I mean, maybe he wants to save it for the Arcaludon uh, late game like he did in game two. Uh, I mean... This soccer pass. Oh my god, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> the Vasco Legion so much, and he actually goes for it and it works. I do believe, like, game one actually, I think there was a similar situation, and like, the King Abbey did not go for soccer punch, and the Arcaudon got the an attack off. But yeah, this time we it plays out differently, and the Archal and the Vasco Legion goes down immediately. Oh. Oh, my oh God. and the uh, and the Bucks caliber gets the okay. fifth hit, so it's a clean game so far on the side of Matt. Uh, yeah, it's not looking too good for Raj. Yeah, oh my God. Yeah. Like, uh, Matt goes like up four to two, and he basically gets no damage actually. Even boosts the speed on the Bucks caliber. Yeah, so yeah. like, uh, I mean, we were talking about which changes Raj needed to make uh, in this matchup, but actually. Uh, yeah, I really don't think it worked, sadly for him. Uh, but yeah, Goldengo, Arcaludon against uh, King Gambit and Baxcalibur with uh, uh, Rillaboom and Sneezer in the back. Same four as the other two games. Yeah, so I guess right now this Baxcalibur is in an awkward situation since it's not going to be doing a lot of damage against the Goldengo and the Arcaludon. So it's it definitely needs to try and get out of there 
Uh, but the problem is it could leave that spot wide open to whatever it switches into. Whereas this King Gambit, it can go for those really strong um, Kowtow Cleaves or the Sucker Punch straight up to the Goldengo right here. And But I we I think the Rillaboom switch is a very good switch here, considering that you're just trying to, you know, weather the damage that this Goldengo could throw out, which is, you know, we did see the Make It Rain, so it does lessen its special attack at the same time. And at the same time, these Electroshocks aren't going to be doing a lot um, if it does target that Rillaboom, especially since it naturally resists it and is holding the Salt Press. But no, we see it going to the King Gamut, which survives it. Ooh, and we see the counter player into the Goldengo going for yet another kill. Uh, I think this was a really smart move. Uh, Matt goes for like super effective in into the Goldengo to basically force a Terra, uh, which then means, uh, because like once you force the Terra, I mean, you either pick up the kill, or you don't, and then the Arcaludon cannot Terra anymore, so you can close combat into it. So yeah, really like smartly managing this end game, and I think, yeah, this is pretty much over. Uh, Raj really needs a miracle to pull this off. Uh, really well yeah. played by me. Uh, and very interesting here that um, Matt does choose to switch out. Um, the really boom since it was just switched in. I was predicting a fake out. Um, in tandem with the Sneasler just coming right in because that way you could check the Arcaludon no matter what but instead I guess Matt just wanting to play it safe right here you know he, he's probably not trying to go after the perfect 4-0 uh, win and just really wants to secure the win considering you know we're down to game 3 he already has all the advantage on his side he might as well just play yeah, it safe I mean, right I mean honestly uh, the Arcaludon doesn't have additional effects so uh, he just wants to like get a uh, close combat into it. Uh, I mean, without uh, activating stamina before. Uh, so yeah, not taking huge risks. But yeah, we do see the tear from the Smizzler. Um, but actually, the Arcanum does the Arcanum go for the Terra here? Oh, it does. Yeah. yeah, I mean, considering your back is to your wall, you might the wall you might as well just throw it out here. So, yeah, based on what we did see on the side of Matt locking into that, uh, I believe it was the close combat. So, uh, in tandem with the fake out, it's going to bring it up to plus two defense. But I don't think that's even going to be enough, considering the sneezer could just throw out the dire claw, which will be boosted by the stellar terrestrialization. So, we'll just have to wait and see. But <laughs> I mean, if the Arcaludon does get out of control with regards to its defense, you know, we might we might see that miracle that you did mention earlier, Arash. Oh, I mean, yes. Like, this is like the ideal situation here uh, for Raj, all things considered, after like last turn. Yeah. But still, it I think it's going to take way too much damage from uh, the Pokemon yeah. <laughs> format. Uh, Though, yeah, and also considering that the Rillaboom is faster than the Arcaldon, so here I think two Dark Claws and uh, two Wood Armors will definitely be enough, even with the boosts. But yeah, let's see. Yeah, it's just gonna take it right out from there with a critical <laughs> hit. Um, the Sneezer probably yeah. just doesn't want to waste time anymore. Yeah, no need to do, go for all those attacks when you just need, like, a crit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, really well played from 